Welcome back to class number two, folks. This is our Flight Fusion Fundamental course. So this class is actually called Hip Work One. So it's class number two, but it's Hip Work One. We have two different hip classes, and this is going to be our first one. So in this class, we are going to look at some of the basic hip work um, components that build up to things like our Maya, our reverse Maya, uh, hip circles, all of that really, really fun stuff. So this is where we're going to look at the building blocks. So in this class, we will cover hip up, hip down, hip slide, hip twist and then also pelvic forward and pelvic back so a lot of topics in this class um, please make sure that you've watched class number one which was our posture class our arm positions and our foot positions I will be referring to those throughout this class um, so if you need to go back you need to pause this class and go back and do that please do and then come back in and we are going to get started so here we go Hip work uh, is one of the fundamental things that we do, and you may have seen this in lots of styles of dance. So we're going to look at our hip work here, um, obviously in, in our hips and up and down. So this is one of the basic movements that you would do, and it's probably the ones that you've noticed most in our dance. Um, there is lots of different ways and terminology for this type of movement, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that we can do within flight fusion. So, Firstly, as always, as I will always say, into your posture. So knee, uh, feet, knees, pelvis, chest, shoulders, head, nice and comfortable. So when we're looking at our hip movements, we're looking at the hip movements up and down. And this is that these are the fundamental movements. We're not going to be looking at anything fancy or anything added on. For this, we're just looking at what these core movements are. As you get more and more into fly fusion and as you grow more and more in your dance, you can start putting really fun articulations and crazy things, but they all come from this basic hip work. So what we're going to look at here is in our dance posture, bending our knees. We want to look at the side of our body. We have a huge big muscle up here called the oblique. And this muscle can pull the hip up and down. And it's one of the ways that we will look at. You also have a big muscle here called your glute. And if you contract that, that can also lift the hip as well in very, very small ways, but it can lift the hip. And then also you have your knees where you can press your knees back and forth and this will allow your hips to move. So. I'm going to show you all different ways. So let's look at the knees first. Um, the knees pressing back and forth. So when you sit in your dance posture, and this is what I talked about quite a bit, in order for you to get your hips to move, you want to make sure that your knees are nice and soft. So as you're bending your knees and extending your knees, you can see that that hip is coming up and down. So in dance posture, relax the shoulders, make sure you're a little bit lifted. You're going to straighten your right knee and let your hip come up and the hip comes up. And now straighten your opposite knee and change, and change, and change. So keeping your chest nice and neutral, keep everything else nice and calm and nice and still. Just let the knees push back and forth. So there's many different ways of doing hip work. This is obviously one of the more general ways. We always be mindful of this one, obviously, for people who have any issues with their knees. Um, and also for when we do this movement, um, we are limited in this version of the hip work when we travel. So if we're thinking about when we travel in dance, when we do our basic walk, it's a little bit more challenging when you're trying to stay in posture doing this movement. Um, and the knee, the knee hip work is great for things like choo-choo shimmy when we get a little bit more advanced. But you just want to be mindful of this. I'm going to show you, as I said, the three of the different ways that we do this in fly. Um, but just be mindful that the different hip uh, movements will work for different things. So bringing our arms into our low position, our low low arm. We're just going to bend the knees back and forth. So just letting the hips come up. Up, up. Just very, very gentle. No overexertion on the knees. We're not knock, locking the knees back or anything. We're just letting the knees press back and forth. And you want to get the hips up, tracking up. Imagine that you're trying to get your hip, hip in, up into your armpit. That was what my first teacher told me. Imagine that you have strings and you're trying to get them up into your armpit. Up, up. Good job. Up. Up and shake out the legs. You may feel a little bit tired in the calves after that because you are sitting in that bend posture, um, but just be mindful of that. So when we're doing our hips here, I'm going to start on the right and I'm going to bend straighten my leg for my hip to come up. 
So as I'm stretching, as I'm alternating my hips, this is called hips on the up. Because when I start or my count number on one, my hip comes up, that is hips going up. So when we start, if I'm starting on my hip, uh, my right side and my hip goes up on the one, that is hips on the up. So let's alternate between those. Up, up, up. Up, up, up. Now, let me show you what hips on the down looks like and see if you can spot the difference. Have you spotted it yet? There is no difference. <laughs> it's the same movement. <laughs> the only difference with hips on the up versus hips on the down is what I said earlier. If I start in on my right side, and that is my leg that's going to start, and on the count of one, my hip goes up, that is hips on the up. If I'm starting and my hip goes down on the one, that is hips on the down. Now, if you look, when my hip goes down on one, what's happening to my opposite side? Coming up, it's the exact same. So we always tend to start things on the right hand side and uh, we tend to travel on the right. That tends to be the first foot we step off with a lot of the times in a lot of different dances. It's not very uh, inclusive of those who are on south paws or on the left hand side. A lot of times in dance things start on the right and start on the one. So when you are stepping, just be mindful if on the first count and it's one and the hip goes up, that is hips on the up. If you're stepping on the one and the hip goes down, that is hips on the down. And that is literally the only difference. The movements are exactly the same. It's literally depends on what foot you're stepping off with or what, what in, uh, where the hip hits. If it's on one it's and it's on the down, it's hips on the down or hips on the up. So let's look at hips on the up. Right, left, right, left. Going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's change that the hips on the down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Same thing. Just literally depends on what foot you start on. So that is hips using our knees. You may feel a little bit of tightness in the calves because it's a new thing to do. What I want you to do we're going to come up to the obliques. Now the obliques are a little bit more challenging to actually tap into, but I have a trick to get you to do it. So what I want you to do is grab a water bottle or a tennis ball, and I'm going to get you to pop this between your knees. This is a great thing to do, just really hone in on your, on your um, muscles. And it took me a long time to practice this because it was like, I would be doing hips thinking that they were up in my oblique and they weren't, they were in my knees. So what I want you to do is take your water ball or a tennis ball if you have it, or a basketball, whatever fits between your legs in your dance posture. You're going to squeeze into dance posture and you're going to squeeze it to make sure it's tight so it doesn't spill, spill out everywhere. And you're going to squeeze your legs together and squeeze your knees into this. And then you're going to do your hip work. And what you'll find is that because you can't pump your knees back and forth, the thing pulling your hip up into your armpit is your oblique. So this is where it starts to get into the muscles. Now, when you start doing this first, it is tiny and that is totally fine because these muscles are doing something that they probably have never done before or they're like, why are you asking me to pull the hip up into the armpit? So just be mindful. So if I come forward, take your ball, squeeze it in between your knees into your dance posture, go belly lifted, and then you're pulling, think about pulling your hip up into your armpit. Now, as I said, it will start off small because you're thinking of contracting this muscle either side. And again, you may not have had to use this in the past, you know, we use this a lot for as we bend laterally um, and it's a big muscle in our body, but you may not have used it for this reason. So if it's small, that's totally fine. So you really want to, if you feel that your knees are getting involved, really think about squeezing that tennis ball or that ball, or whatever you have, squeezing it together to stop the knees from moving and really think about bringing that back up into your hips. And again, same thing. We're just alternating the hips up, up, up. Up. So really think about squeezing into that oblique and activating it. And you may find that you get tired a lot quicker. And that's totally fine. Take a break and take some rest. So you really want to think about you're not using the knees. If I stand to the side, I don't want to, I don't want my knee to go back and forth to actually articulate this movement. I really want to try and focus everything here. Bring the arms out, squeezing that bottle up. So you'll see I have a little crease that will happen 
in my side because I'm starting to bring that hip up into the oblique. And again, your knees will try to move, your legs will try to move. Everything's attached, so it will move, but it's not been driven by the knee. And that's the most important part. It's been contracted by the oblique and it's been driven by the oblique. As you get more and more into dance, this becomes a really important hip move when you try to travel. Because as I said, when you're doing hip work with your knees and you are running around and you want to do things really fast, if you are f counting on your knees to do your hip work, you're going to be running like this to try and get any kind of fast. Whereas if you can do any of your hip work into the obliques, and again, this takes time, that means you can travel at any pace and your hips and obliques can be doing all the work for you. So a little bit of separation. And again, do not worry about this right now. If you can get your hips with your knees going up, up with your knees, and then practicing the oblique one by putting your bottle between your legs and coming up here. That is all I want from you. So take a little break for a moment. We're going to look at the glutes. So the glutes, your butt muscles, for those of you who don't know, um, they're real big powerhouses of movement. Now, when they start off first, the movement starts off quite small. So this is the way I tend to wear a hip scarf so that you can see the movement when I start my hips and they're kind of small. So standing in your dance posture, you really want to think about this and I will be as graphic as I, less graphic as I possibly can, but think about squeezing your butt. And I tend to do this a lot and I'm squeezing my own imaginary butt here, but you can do it. It's ni a nice visual to help you kind of go, okay, squeeze, squeeze. So what you're going to do, you let your glutes out, sitting in your posture and you're going to squeeze your left glute up and then release it. So knees need to be really, really soft here. You need to be sitting in posture, squeeze your butt up and then release it out. So squeeze one cheek up and release. And you can see the movement is sharp, but very, very small. So this movement you would possibly do when you are super close to someone in, an, in a performance where you're like right close to them and you're like, boom, 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 here's my butt. Um, it's not something to do when you're in a big stage full of people. You can't see it, it's very small, but there are multiple ways of doing it, which is why I want to show you all of them. Squeeze, let's go to the right hand side. So squeeze, neutral, squeeze, neutral. So there is, as I said, multiple ways of doing these movements. And these are the ones that, you know, just gives you a nice rounding at the start. Squeeze, release, squeeze, squeeze. So let's try to go alternate. We're gonna go right, release, left, release. You always have to release in the glutes because you can so easily just hold the contraction in super tight, like oh, holding it in. Um, so you have to make sure that as part of the movement, the release is a big part of release. Hold, release, hold, release. And you can see by my, how my hip scarf is moving, how small these movements are. So again, not a big impressive hip movement as you start doing it, but it is one to practice and it's a fun one to get used to. And again, another one for your toolbox of, of dance uh, components. So there are the main three. So we have our knee. In our dance posture, we have our knee. Hips on the up, again, really big, beautiful hip movement, very easy to do. Just be mindful of your knees. And again, the limitations to this is as you get more, as you start one travel, you're limited by your knees. So this is why we then practice into our obliques. So sitting in, put your bottle if you need to. Think about pulling in your obliques. Up, up. Keeping those knees nice and soft. If you want to, put your bottle in there, pull. Up, up. Up. And again, the more and more you practice this, the bigger those movements get, the more and more your muscle gets used to contracting in that way. It'll get bigger and bigger. And then we have our glutes. So contract, contract, contract. Up, 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 up. And shake it out. So there are hips on the up and hips on the down. So as I said earlier, the difference between hips on the up and hips on the down is purely which hip is you start off with. So if you're starting and your first movement when your hip drops down on the right side or on your left side, depending on which foot you're going off, it's usually on the right side. If you're starting on the right and you step and your foot goes down, it's hips on the down. If you're stepping on the one and your hip goes up, it's hips on the up. Same movement. It's just depending on the foot that you start. So it's just a little way for us to, when we're doing choreography or learning kind of steps, 
to know what we're doing and what hip we should be on. So let's come back into this. Hips on the down. We're going to step using our basic walk and we're going to step and we're going to step with our hips going up. So when you step that foot, that hip is going to come up. When you step the foot again, the hip is going to come up. So step, hip comes up, step, hip comes up. Let's go back. When you step, that hip comes up, step, hip comes up, step, up, step, up. So in this walk, I'm using a mixture of my knees and my glutes, uh, my knees and my obliques for this. So sitting in your dance posture will allow you to be able to do your knee uh, hip movements of this um, and your obliques. So just be mindful as you step, your knee is staying in that dance posture. And as you pull your hip up, you're still in a slight bent knee. So as you step, the hip comes up. You're still in a slight bent knee. Step, hip comes up. So just be mindful that you're still walking in that posture. And this is where it gets a little bit challenging and why you need to practice even walking in the posture because you still think about your foot position, your posture, and now your hips on top of that. So three layers, all of the fun time stuff. So take your time with this. Let's go again. In dance posture, we're gonna use our knees for this one. Arms into a low eye. Let's start walking. Step the foot, that hip comes up. Step the foot again, the hip comes up. Step, up, step, up. Let's go back as you step back, that hip goes up and up, up and up. One more time, up, 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 up. So every step has a hip, 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 hip. Lovely, good job. So you can practice if you want as well with the tennis ball or the water ball between your legs to get really into those obliques, but just be mindful in, in, that you're in a space that you won't bump into things. When I used to practice this, I fell over so many times <laughs> as I was walking because I was like trying to hold the thing in between my legs and trying to walk. So it's a little bit of a challenge. So take your time with that one. Let's do hips on the down in the basic walk. So same thing but as I step this foot my hip is going down rather than going up so again it's critical that you are sitting in your dance posture those knees are bent in order to have that hip movement so let's do it a couple of times before we go into a drill so you're stepping and the hip goes down now if you look at the opposite leg what's happening here is that hip is going up same thing we were just doing except the emphasis is on the hip that's going down so stepping down and again opposite leg step it down and down and down now let's step it back that hip step the foot back the hip is going down 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 yeah so every time we step i'm still keeping that hip in the position until i need to change it so i'm not coming back to a neutral position or anything i'm keeping that hip up and as i change boom changing legs over changing over so let's drill that a little, bringing the arms into a low position, low belly lifted into a dance posture, prep that foot into stiletto and we're going to lift it to step the foot down. So if you want, prep the hip up, stepping down and down and down and down, go back, down, 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 down and forward. Down, 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 and back, down, 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 down. Good job. Shake it out. Take a deep breath in. Exhale down. So that was hips on the up and on the down in the three different ways. So with your knees, with your obliques and with your glutes. With the knees, obviously, it's really, really good because the hip movements are nice and big. But the limitations are is as you go through, you can't travel as quickly. So the obliques are great. Really, really good one to do. They isolate the legs from the upper body. The challenge of this is it's a big muscle and it takes time to practice. But if you use the method where you have the bottle between your legs, that will start helping. It's it's not as quick win as the knees, so it, that is a limitation. 
The glutes are great, great one to practice, um, contracting and releasing. Just be mindful as you contract the glute, the release is part of it as well, because what will happen is as you get faster, you will hold, your glutes will go whoop and hold themselves unless you think of the release. So start slow with that one, contract, release, contract, release. The limitations with the with the glute hip work is that it's very small, as I said. When you look at it, it's very, very, very small. It's not big, and as the only time kind of as you practice it and you can start to shimmy with it, it's still very, very small. So again, practice all of the different ways. You may find one that works really well for you. And that's totally awesome. So practice all of the ways for the hips up and down. So we're going to do a quick drill with the hips up and the hips down using our walking patterns from class number one. So we are going to do basic walk like we just did. We are going to do cross open with our hip work and then grapevine and adding our arms in as well. So as we these classes go, we will build more and more on them. So let's into our dance posture. Hips nice and soft. Arms down. We're going to start with hips on the up which means when I step on my right, my hip is going up. So we'll start using the knee hip up. You can pick any one that you want to that you're working on. As I said, use, your, use the technique from the start of this class and build up to this. The drill that I'm gonna ask you to do for this is practicing the fly fusion walking pattern. So walking, um, basic walk, cross step and grapevine and using the hip work with it, starting to layer that stuff on top. So let's go with a resting arm first and we're gonna walk forward and our hip is going to go up as we step. So stepping one, two, three, four. Let's step back, back, two, three, four. Let's bring the arms into low. Stepping one, two, three, four, and back, one, two, three, four. Mid arm, one, two, three, four, and back, one, two, three, four, high arm, one, two, three, four, and back, one, two, three, four, body wave arm forward, one, two, three, four and back, one, two, three, four, arms down, shake it out, good job. Let's try cross open. So for cross open, I'm going to just get you to keep your arms nice and low. This is a challenge as we step over and I want you to work up to this. So we're going to go up, this is where the challenge is, open, opposite side, cross the foot, open a little bit of a challenge this one will take time but i promise you you will get it uh, it's just one of those head mind meld things so we will just practice this forward and back so standing in position the hip goes up 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 yeah up 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 challenge i know up 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 and back up 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 that's just a little bit more advanced than what we're doing but just to show you how those things pair on together let's do grapevine with that one as well hips on the up again so same thing with grapevine stepping out behind out stiletto out behind out stiletto going to do the hip work so every time we step that hip is coming up so let's start on the right we're stepping out on the right arms in low here we go going up 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 and again up 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 so let's step it out again on the right going up in the hips up up, up, and again, up, 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 up. 
So that one, they're quite challenging when we start adding these on, but I know you guys can do it. So practice walking forward and back in the basic walk using that hip work for up and down. And you should be fine. Those two last pieces with the cross open and the grapevine are a little bit more challenging. So take your time with those. Get comfortable with doing grapevine, with doing cross open, and then start layering the hip work on top. So let's come on to our next movement that we're going to look at, and that is the pelvic tuck and, sorry, pelvic forward and back. So again, this has many names um, in different types of dance. In a fly fusion, we call it front and back. So like our hip work, we were going side to side, but our hip work, there we're going to go front to back. And we touched on a little bit of this when we were in posture, um, when I talked about having that pelvic lumbar relationship. So the pelvic lock, uh, the pelvic front and back is bringing the pelvis all the way back and then bringing it to neutral. So neutral is your dance posture with this. So when you're starting off, learning this type of dance uh, first. I always tell people that when we go pelvic lock forward, pelvic lock back, that when you lock it forward, so it's when you bring your pelvis back to neutral, you are bringing it back to your dance posture. You're not just letting it go. You're not just being like, hey, us all hanging out. Because what happens there is it will go straight into your lower back and bang, you may, you're gonna cause yourself an issue. I know this because I've done it many a time. <laughs> so I'm telling you, try not to do that. So um, this is why I talk when we're in dance posture, our dance posture is slightly contracted here. So when we talk about pelvic lock back, you're really thinking about contracting that belly bone all the way back to that spine, one, pulling it right in and trying to get that really, really, really big pelvic push forward. So popping it right the way back, pulling that belly button into spine as much as possible. And then when you talk about pelvic lock forward, you were literally, oh, sorry, pelvic lock back, you were bringing it back to neutral dance posture. Boom. So neutral dance posture, still with that slight contraction. Back, forward, back, forward. So never, not never, you can totally do it if you're a little bit stronger in the belly, but just purely for this, because you're a beginner, I would always, always, always highly recommend that you go from all the way locked back, because we can lock all the way back here and that's fine. But when you're bringing it back forward, come into dance posture. Don't let it overextend. Again, it can just cause a lot of issues with the back. As you get more and more stronger in your dance and you have a lot more control over your pelvic lumbar relationship, you can drop a little bit more into that. Um, and you'll see that as we come to do circles, you can go a little bit more into that. But please, for the moment, lock it back, fully back, and then dance posture. So let's look at that. So I'm going to bring down my belly so you can see my belly button here. So when I am in my dance posture, when I'm just in normal, I'm like this. This is my normal posture um, from working at a computer all day. So when I come into my dance posture, lift up, my, my lower belly is lifted slightly. When I come into a pelvic contraction, it's all the way back. You can see like my belly button's gone. It's basically a little sad face now. And then neutral dance posture. If I'm to fully release out of my dance posture, that's fully released. So you can see the difference. We're going from neutral dance posture, which is my dance posture, locking all the way back to neutral. So I'm locking back, neutral, back, neutral. So always when you're pelvic, when you're releasing your pelvic lock, you're coming back to that dance posture. Always in, dance posture, in, dance posture. So pelvic lock back, pelvic lock forward, pelvic lock back, Pelvic lock forward, in, forward, and back. So you're always thinking of that. So as when the pelvic lock forward, when you're coming forward, that is into your dance, that's dance neutral posture. So when you're coming back, just to be mindful of that. So pelvic lock forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, and forward, back. A little, also a little note to this, um, your glutes will love to get involved because they can do it. And they're like, look, I can do it. I can get it all up in there. And that, problem, again, the problem with that is that you may want to use your glutes for shimmying while you're doing this. You may want to have them do something completely different. So while you can use your glutes 
to push this pelvic lock forward, I encourage you just to practice without them, purely again so that you have an additional movement capability here and you're not training or learning the initial movement by using this because then it's harder to separate them as you get on and dance. So I always think about really focusing everything in here, pulling it forward and back and trying to keep the glutes out of it. They love to get involved because they're really good at doing it. And they're like, hey, look, bang, look at me. I'm, I can do this for you. But then you're like, no, I need you to do something else. So just be mindful that your pelvic, uh, that your pelvic lock is coming from your front of your pelvis. In, out, in, out. And if you feel your glutes getting involved, just give them a little tap just to stop them from contracting. Uh, mine do it all the time. They love just getting involved in it because they can emphasize the move I want them to do. But I really want to train my, pel my front pelvis to be able to pull this in and my lower abdominals to be able to contract this rather than relying on the powerhouse that are the glutes. So in, out, in, and out. So again, when you release, you're coming back to that neutral dance posture. You're not going overextending into that. Again, you can pull it as far back as you possibly can, get your belly button as far back to your spine as you possibly can, but you are not uh, releasing fully into that lower back because you can see straight away when I contract into that lower back, it is, re I can feel it straight away even if I go into it, it's sore on the lower back. So be very, very mindful of that. So with that, let us do some drills. <laughs> So standing in your dance posture, shoulders up and down the back, arms in low. We're going to think about bringing that belly button into the spine and out, in, and in, in, and in, and in. So from the side, bringing in, neutral dance posture, in, neutral dance posture, in, neutral, in, neutral, in, neutral. And just be mindful that your shoulders and your chest are just sitting in a comfortable position. They're not getting involved, they're not engaged. They're not part, part of this movement. The movement is purely happening in your pelvis. In, and in, in, and in. Okay, so let's try to put that to walking like we did with our hips let's walk with it coming forward neutral like pulling in neutral in neutral so standing in our dance posture we're going to step and as we step we're going to bring that pelvis in as we step again bringing that pelvis out so it's like our basic walk in and out coming in letting it go back to neutral in neutral so Let's do it nice and slowly. Take your time with these drills. If they're too much for you and you want to focus on the technique, these feel free. Um, there's no, we don't need to rush through any of this. When you're comfortable, and as I said, once you have the walking patterns and your posture locked in, this is when you can start adding the two things together. So let's do our walk. And in, out, in, out, in, out. In, out, in, out. You may find this a little bit easier because it's not, the hips are not attached directly to the knees for this one because it is, this is very much in the front of the body. You may find this a little bit easier. In, out. And again, it's one of those things that you will have a movement that you go to, that you know inside out, or that just sits with you really well because you may have done something in the past that mimicked this movement or a similar muscle that you would have used. So you may know how to do this. Um, for those of you who do Pilates, and you may have done the bridge before, this is one of the movements that they get you to do. It's called um, uh, flattening out the lower back. Um, I cannot think of the name but now. Um, but you flatten out the lower back before you roll your pelvis up. And this is quite literally that same movement. Back, in, back, in, out, in. Out. Okay. So, pelvis in to neutral, as I said, and I cannot stress this enough, coming back to your neutral dance posture is really, really critical in this. You do not need to overextend into that at all. It's not what we're going for. So please be mindful and take care of yourself when you're doing this. Coming back to your neutral dance posture is just the most important thing. So let's review our hip work that we have learned today. 
we had our hip work in three different types. Um, we had our hips on the up using our knees. So stretching into the knees, up, 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 up. Hips on the down using our knees. Again, difference between up and down. I'm sure you're shouting it. It depends on which leg you start on. So let's go hips on the down, 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 down. Then we had hips using our obliques. So again, if you need to, and I'm sure you probably will for a while, pop that tennis ball, that basketball, whatever between your knees to help you drive this movement up. We're going up, 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 up. And then hips on the down using the obliques. Again, starting on the side, starting on the right, going down, 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 and down. Great. Then we had our last one, which was in our glutes, as I said, very small movement, and that's totally fine. So let's start on the right. We're going hips on the up, starting on the right with our glute, contracting up, release, left, release, right, release, left. Release. Now let's go hips on the down with our uh, with our glutes. So in order to go hips on the down, we go on the opposite side to make that hip drop. So contract, release, contract, release, contract, release, contract, release. So one more time. Contract, release, contract, release, contract, release, contract, release. Good job. Then we had our pelvic, uh, our pelvic lock forward and pelvic lock back. So um, to confuse everything, I, when I call pelvic lock uh, forward, I will ask you to go forward into your neutral dance posture. So I tend to call this neutral, even though it is pelvic lock forward. So we have pelvic lock back, pelvic lock forward. So when you're blocking forward, always remember you're coming back to your neutral dance posture. So contracting your belly button, coming all the way in, releasing out. In, releasing to dance posture. So coming in, dance posture, in, dance posture. And again, the other little trick to this, just make sure that your glutes are not getting involved. As I said, they totally can, and they absolutely can, and they're brilliant at it. But again, we want to make sure that we have this technique on its own so that we can add stuff to it later. As I said, it's more difficult to separate these two things out once you've learned them, and especially when you're new to it, you're training them a lot. So you want to make sure those glutes are not there. Try and give them a little tap to make sure that they're not completely contracting, and that you are just focusing on the lower abdominals, your pelvic muscles here to pull you forward and releasing out. In, release, in, release, and shake it out. So we have two more things to do in this class and it is slides and twists. Uh, slide is a beautiful movement. We move on the horizontal with the hips. Um, with this one as well, just be mindful as we, uh, as this movement goes to the side, be mindful of your dance posture here as well. If you have a, few, a foot position that's a little bit closer together, we are going to be alternating out to the sides. So be mindful that if you need to and your foot position is a little bit closer, you may need to step out and that's fine because as we shift through this, what you don't want is to be in a position where your feet are close together, but you're shifting your weight off center. And then what will happen is your body will try to counter you from doing that. So you're, you'll find that your rib cage will shift out because it feels like your body is falling. So be mindful to step out. So in your dance posture, I want you to take just a slight half step out in order to do this. So knees nice and soft. And what we're going to do is imagine that we have two ropes either side of our hips here. And we're trying desperately to stay in the posi same position, but our hips are being pulled either side. We have two dogs and they're just trying to run after to get snacks on either side and we're trying to hold them. So they're tight to your hips here. Knees are soft. I want you to do a neutral body. You're just going to push your hip over to the side and you'll feel that we're stretching into this oblique and this oblique is lengthening. This one is contracting here and we're lengthening here. Coming back into neutral. Those knees are always bent. Remember you're in your dance posture. Pulling to the opposite side and in. You'll feel a real articulation here as you pull forward. And this again is your oblique stretching out. And then you may, you may have done this before or you maybe stand, stood like this, very similar thing. Um, and as you move forward, you will feel that articulation in the oblique, contracting, 
contract. And the most challenging part of this is holding your chest. Your chest wants to get involved. It's like, oh, hey, I can do all of this oppositional thing for you because we've all have done this before. But you're trying so hard to keep this neutral. And again, it's that same principle that I talked about with the glutes, with the pelvis. You can totally add them together and make huge, big movements. But for the purposes of learning and learning these movements straight off, we want to try and separate them from the other parts of the body so that when we start getting super clear into those techniques, that we can start adding them all and create mad, mad movements and mad combos. So if you need to, and I'm terrible for doing this, I have to hold my chest to try and stop myself from moving side to side. I really want this just focused in my side again, using the visual of someone that has a rope either side and they're just pulling you out and out and you're trying desperately to keep yourself in the middle hold your chest if you need to side 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 a good uh visualization i got before was that imagine your belly button is on a table and you're trying to keep it horizontal and slide it across the table that worked it worked for me years ago i was like oh yeah okay so watch where my when i articulate you'll see i'm really really stretching into either side of my body and it takes a lot, it demands a lot of the body um, as you're articulating because you want to remain everything, you want to have everything remain nice and neutral, but here is working like a workhorse. Pulling, 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 pulling. So shake it out. Your upper body is probably like, ah, why am I so stiff? It's purely because it's trying to, it's natural a bit, and it's natural thing is to, to alternate and to make sure to keep you on balance. So what will happen is that if you shoot your hip out, your, your rib cage will try to stop you from falling because it thinks you're falling. So just be mindful of that. You may feel your upper back getting a little tight there. You may feel it was just a little bit harder on the rest of the body, even though this was lovely and flowing. It's purely because your body is going against something that it will naturally do. So let's do it again. Nice and soft, pushing side, side, side. So bring those arms into a mid arm, side, side. Push, push, good job, push. And again, try to relax your body and I know that's absolutely <laughs> something you're like, yes, yeah, Stacy, but I can't. And that's totally fine, shoulders up, bring your shoulders deck back down. And if you need to, and if you're finding that it's a little bit too much, shake it out totally fine bring it back up center yourself again and get back into it and again all of this stuff just takes practice and you can watch over and over these videos and just take these little snippets and practice these over and over 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 and again the more and more comfortable you get with your with your obliques in this when more and more you practice your hip work you'll start to get it. the more comfortable you get in the posture Again, it all helps and it will all build. And shake it out. I know there's probably some of you out there who got that like that. And it happens, like some movements are just are meant for people. For me, it's the Maya and Taxim. I don't know why, I could just do that. I, I couldn't for the life of me tell you why I could do it, but I just could. All the other moves, it took years to learn, but that one was really good. And you may have that moment, that may be your movement. And you may be like, yep, I got this. And that's totally cool. The next one that we're going to look at is uh, the twist. Now, again, same concept. You're going on that horizontal, except we're twisting front to back. So instead of going like this, we're now twisting side to side. So again, please be mindful with this. Make sure that you are in your dance posture. And as you are twisting, you are allowing your knees to bend forward and back. What tends to happen when we do this, um, when we twist, and you can do lots of, lots of different versions of twists, which are great. If I'm doing a twist and I lock my legs straight, what's happening here is I'm twisting into my knees and not realizing it. And this will cause me some issues. So if I bend my knees and twist, I'm allowing my knees to actually bend and articulate as I move. So it's always really, really important to be mindful of your knees when you're doing any kind of hip movement, that the knees are bent and that you're allowing the hips to move. Straight legs when you're doing this is fine if you have done the technique for this a lot. Um, I would not recommend doing this level of a twist or shimmy or shimmy twist when you're just starting out. Um, you need to understand the posture and you need to understand how this is going to affect your body before you start doing that. So please be mindful, bend the knees into the dance posture. So let's look at the twist. And again, 
this may come natural to you. You may have been in a nightclub before and been like, whoop, 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 and we all know how to do that. And it could be all of that. And you, again, this may be your move. So let's look at that. You're gonna twist the hips forward, forward. So you're thinking about trying to get that hip, this little corner of the hip to the front. Again, another trick to this is to keep that chest neutral. <laughs> trying to keep the chest nice and calm, facing forward. We don't want the, the, the chest to go with the body as we turn the hips. We want to keep that chest neutral. The twist is purely in the hips. So twist, 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 twist. And we're twisting on that horizontal as well. There's no lift or anything yet in this. As I said, when you add all of these movements together, if I add a hip lift with this twist, you get this really, really gorgeous movement. When you break them down, it's this and this. So we start breaking down, like, let's get the fundamentals down before we start adding crazy things in. Twist, twist, twist. Make sure to keep those pelvic nice and lifted. Twisting in, keeping your dance posture. Twist, 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 lovely. Twist, twist. Twist, twist, twist. Two more, one, two, and shake it out. So we had our hip movements. We had our three hip movements with our three different ways of doing them. Uh, sorry, our two hip movements with our three different ways. Then we had our slide and our twist. So they are some of the fundamental moves. And in our next hip class, we're actually going to take these movements and create uh, the Maya, which is the big hip over. We're going to use the twist and the slide for that. And then we're also going to do the hip circle, the interior and exterior. And there, the hip circle, while it's a circle, it actually comes from those hip movements and the pelvic tuck. So what I want you to do is practice that hip up, uh, the pelvic tuck, the slide, and the twist, and I will see you in next class, hip two, where we will put that stuff together and make more beautiful combos. Thanks for joining me.